Okay, so let's have a look at what Newton's laws actually mean to us on a day-to-day -day basis and look at aspects of car safety through Newton's laws. There are a number of aspects in a modern car that are very different to cars that you might have seen 50 or 60 years ago. These things include anti-locking brakes, which you may have talked about in the motion unit that stop the cars from locking up and stopping skidding. Okay, But things like airbags, safety belts and crumple zones all are all there to help us uh, remain safer as a result of applying Newton's laws to car design and engineering. So if we think about the parts of a car safety system, one of the first things that have come about since cars were invented and then started having accidents was the safety belt. Okay, so we know from Newton's first law that a body in motion will remain in motion unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. If we consider this situation here where a driver is driving in the car, they need to brake suddenly or are involved in a collision, the car is going to stop suddenly, but the driver is still going to move forward with the motion that they had, okay, until an unbalanced force acts upon it. In this case, the seatbelt. The seatbelt then will provide an equal and opposite force backwards, halting the forward motion of the passenger. Okay, so this means that now we're looking at both Newton's first and third laws, but primarily with our seatbelts, Newton's first law kicks in first, that unbalanced force needs to be applied or the motion would continue. And in this case, the occupant could potentially go through the windscreen as their motion continues in the forward direction, even though the motion of the car has stopped. Okay, same goes for an airbag. Collision occurs, airbag deploys, the um, occupant then is having a force applied against them, slowing their forward motion due to the pressure from the airbag. Okay, so this is where we can start to see Newton's first law in the development of safety considerations. Next one I want to talk about is crumple zones. Crumple zones um, are something in modern cars when you see a collision you will notice that the cars look pretty trash no matter what even if it's a fairly low speed collision this is definitely the case compared to collisions that you might have seen in cars 20 30 40 years ago or older cars with solid steel contru uh, rigid constructions modern cars are built with crumple zones in mind in order to protect the passenger not the car if a car is to hit an obstacle such as a wall, the action force is going to push the car against the wall and the wall have an equal force as a reaction force back against the car. This is Newton's third law. But we know from Newton's second law that if we give more time in order for the change in velocity to occur, we will reduce the acceleration. And if we reduce the acceleration, then we will reduce the force with which that final impact occurs. So these crumple zones combine aspects of both Newton's second law and Newton's third law. Third law being that no matter what force the car is going to hit um, or collide with the object it collides with, there will be an equal and opposite reaction force. So if we can reduce the acceleration, i.e. increase the time of which the slowing down occurs over or reduce the vo velocity of the final collision, then we're going to see less force being applied and this will mean less damage to the occupant. So as you can see, in most of these situations, when we're describing them, it depends on the perspective that we take as to which law is the one we consider to be most active in that situation. We looked at examples where the second and third law were um, explained in the use of crumple zones. You could argue it from either side. And also with the first law with the use of seatbelts, but that could also be looked at with an element of third law in as well. So when we look at motion, it is important for us to be able to describe it using each one of the three laws of motion that we have learned. 